it is one of the strangest stories to come out of Beacon Hill in recent memory. During the pandemic, Massachusetts somehow paid out $2.5 billion in unemployment benefits from the wrong pool of money using federal funds instead of state funds. To be clear, that is billion with a B. And now we may have to pay that money back. The Massachusetts congressional delegation is blaming former Governor Charlie Baker and urging the feds to come up with a solution that, quote, minimizes the impact on hardworking people and small businesses. But so far, current Governor Maura Healy and legislative leaders aren't really pointing fingers at the Baker administration, and they don't seem to be that worried either. Joining me to make sense of all of it are GBH News State House reporter Katie Lannon and Samuel Gebru, the managing director of Black Lion Strategies and a professor of the practice of political science at Tufts University. Good to see you both. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Katie, I feel like, for me at least, the broad contours of this story are pretty clear. We just ran through them. But the details, the finer grain points, strike me as awfully hazy. What don't we know still about how this all went down? Adam, I have so many questions still, and it feels like the more I look at this, think about it, the, the more I realize I, I need an answer to. And we kind of have two sections of questions right now. There's the, the forward-looking and the backward-looking. The forward-looking is the one that's looming over everything, the now what, right? What is the state going to do about this $2.5 billion problem? The backward-looking is, you know, there's so much there from how did this happen how was it not caught sooner in mm -hmm. both this outside audit that the Baker administration commissioned and as part of the regular financial reporting? Who was responsible for missing it? Was it a person? Was it a division? Are there consequences? You know, we've heard from the Healy administration that there's been efforts to improve internal controls. But ultimately, what, what is the control that needs to be improved here? I've certainly, you know, paid a bill out of my savings account versus my checkings account. Yeah, but that's, that's a one-time thing. I, don't, I notice right away. I'm like, that balance isn't where it should be. And it sounds like the Baker administration did notice someone caught that the balance wasn't declining the way you'd expect. Well, to me, that's one of the weirdest things that we just learned is that someone, in the, according to the congressional delegation letter that we mentioned, that someone in the Baker administration said, hey, wait a minute, this is sort of weird because we're paying these expanded unemployment benefits during the pandemic, but the pot of money that those are supposed to come from, it isn't going down. What's up with that? And they hire an outside firm, and the outside firm basically says everything's okay. Yeah, so and strange. I remember getting that report from the outside firm, and I looked back at the announcement of it today, and it doesn't really say why they were doing it. Mm -hmm. They oh. just describe it as a you know, oh, financial review. So Samuel, Katie's run through a whole bunch of unknowns. Are you as perplexed by this as she is as we watch it? Uh, I don't know, as we learn more and figure out what's going to happen next? Yeah, so yes and no. I, I'm perplexed by the number, right? 2.5 billion with a B. But uh, when you look at other states, uh, you know, it, it was not uncommon to see a misuse of funds here and there, but it wasn't to the amount that we see here in Massachusetts. Um, but I do agree with Katie, you know, uh, it raises a lot of questions about the, the financial controls, particularly from a governor whose uh, proponents and supporters uh, argued, you know, his managerial expertise, yep. his fiscal competency, that, that, that was sort of what he ran on, what he got elected on. Um, and this isn't the only mishap. I mean, there were other questions when, uh, I believe it was KPMG that, that did a, a review of the unemployment uh, insurance uh, in 2021 and found uh, sort of a mis misuse of $300 million. And so there's a question around... Was that around, paying out the benefits that weren't supposed to be paid yes, out to people? Yes. Yeah. Um, but then also in 2021, uh, we, we learned that um, uh, the Unemployment Insurance Trust Fund had, had more money than we actually thought it did, right? And mm -hmm. so uh, th there have been questions along the way. So in, in a way, this is shocking, but also not, right? But you go to other states, uh, you know, but one of my favorite examples in Alabama, uh, they, they used, uh, the governor used $400 million of federal stimulus funds uh, to pay for a new prison. So... And now, but just as an aside, I don't know. I learned about that from you, actually, when we were texting earlier yeah. today. Are they faced with a similar situation where yes. Alabama needs to come up yes. with a Yes, and, 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 and these other states are facing similar audits and similar corrective reviews. I would say, you know, in Massachusetts, although there's this glaring misuse of funds, it's not like it went to, you know, pay for someone's vacation home or something. Point this taken. went to some real emergency needs. And maybe that is what Governor Healy is talking about. I know she said, I can't remember, it may have been in a response or uh, to a question from you, Katie, but at the, the big three press avail earlier this week, she talked about other states having issues, but she didn't really get into examples, maybe because 
there might not be any that are, are equal in magnitude. Um, a question for both of you, and I was trying to think this through when I wrote something about this earlier this week. If, in fact, these benefits were supposed to be paid out of the state's unemployment trust fund but weren't, um, and there's currently, I think, about $3 billion in that trust fund, what is to stop the state from basically just saying, okay, well, if we get a bill from the feds saying we need to pay back $2.5 billion or whatever it is, we'll just take that money out of the employ unemployment trust fund, we'll pay it to them, you know, call it a day, and move on. What's wrong with that as a solution? Samuel, let's start with you, and then we'll go to you, Katie. Yeah, I strongly disagree with that approach because uh, it, it's unfair to businesses. It, it's unfair to employers. Uh, they are not responsible for this uh, uh, discrepancy, this misuse of funds. So why should it be on them? Why should it be on the Unemployment Insurance Trust Fund to pay for that? Um, I would argue, looking at something like the Rainy Day Fund or something else as, as a potential means of paying for this, but to take a step back, we don't even know if Mass Massachusetts has to pay the money back yet. We don't, which is so, one of the weird things. Which is, about, yeah, sorry. so we're in this little holding pattern right now. So if all is good and said and, you know, the U.S. Department of Labor says, actually, you're fine, then great, we can all walk home. I want to make sure I understand you here, though, uh, because the, the state's businesses fund the unemployment trust fund through taxes that they pay. Yes. But again, what would be wrong with using that fund now since those funds were supposed to be used yeah. to pay these benefits during the pandemic and they weren't? I mean, yeah. the, the, the money is still there for the right reason. So how would that be unfairly penalizing businesses? I think, one, there's a sticker shock of the, the, the amount. It would depend on, you know, uh, how much are they uh, drawing from the Unemployment Insurance Trust Fund? Is it $2.5 billion one-time payment? Is it sort of over a few months or over a few years? I guess that's something that would have to be decided with the feds. What mm -hmm. is the repayment term for this? Yeah. Hypothetically, of course. Um, so there's that. But then the other piece is like, hey, you know, the employers didn't cause this mess, so why should they have to cover for okay. it? Even though to, you know, the correct point that, you know, this would have come from uh, the, the trust fund to begin with. And just for the record, I do understand why the business community, and they've been very vocal on this, yeah. probably is, is more vocal than anyone else. I understand why they would certainly balk at being asked to pay extra money to, yeah. to make this situation yeah. whole. Uh, Katie, do you want to tackle that or should I throw a different question at you? That unemployed, why not take it out of the unemployment trust? Fund? I think a big part of it is just a, a simple math question. You know, we haven't, we're not at the volume of unemployment claims that we were seeing, you know, when this happened early in the pandemic, but those benefits are still being paid out to people. And if you take $2.5 billion, there's a real solvency yeah. question mm -hmm. of, of what's left and how long can the, the state keep that fund solvent. And I guess that, again, could lead to a situation in which, hypothetically, employers might be asked to kick in a little extra to deal with this unexpected. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, question for both of you once more. The, the delegation is making a point of saying this was Charlie Baker's fault. He was, you know, they're not saying he was asleep at the wheel, but that's the gist of, of their comments. The business community is saying, hey, don't, don't make us suffer because of this mistake that was made by the previous administration. And yet, to my eye and ear, the so-called big three, Governor Healy, uh, Senate President Karen Spilka, and House Speaker Ron Mariano, they seem to me to be pretty understated about this. They don't seem externally that worked up about it, and they don't seem especially eager to let the words Governor Baker, or former Governor Baker, cross their lips. Are you surprised, I'll start with you, Samuel, and then go to you, are you surprised that they're taking the sort of low-key approach they are? No. Um, I, I don't, even when Baker was, was governor, um, the legislature did not necessarily have a combative relationship with him. Uh, and, and Healy, even as a candidate, uh, was never really running against Baker. No, in no, that way. quite the and contrary, right? Con she was quite the contrary. Of, and know. I also think that, you know, on an issue like this, um, uh, where we were in a very unprecedented time in this country, a, a national emergency like we've never seen before, billions of federal dollars coming to states and, and municipalities and no one really knowing what to do. I mean, we had to set up a, you know, the, the state had to set up a whole new line of uh, unemployment insurance for gig workers, for instance, right? That, that came out of nowhere. We, we've never had that before. So I, I think there's, there's a sense of being a little bit more forgiving. Uh, also, this isn't like transportation where it's kind of like in your face every day, like, oh, the tea doesn't work. Right, and and, and you look, know, it's not working again. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, something fell on someone's head and now they're injured. Um, th that's not this. So, so I, I don't think... Uh, I also don't think you just score that many political points uh, in this case, but it does raise serious questions to your point around transparency and, and, and uh, just basic accounting uh, and, and the fact that multiple audit firms miss this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've been there as they've 
been low drama. You know, mm-hmm. I, I remember an audio that you shared with me, Ron Mariano, saying, well, we still haven't gotten the bill. Just this sort of almost If there is language. a bill, if he said, <laughs> which yeah. kind of was the first I'd heard someone in a you know position of authority like that suggesting, well, maybe we won't have to pay it back. Mm-hmm. And it really, that whole conversation that we, the State House Press Corps, had with the big three on Monday really, to me, raises the question of, well, what did Governor Healy say to them in their private meeting before the the press availability, right? What was she telling them more about her conversation with federal labor labor officials and how those are going and the tenor of those talks than maybe, you know, they're ready to tell reporters and make public yet? You know, it could have been that she had a very reassuring conversation with them and told them, look, I don't think we really do need to worry all that much about this, which that's speculation on my part, but it certainly didn't sound like she said anything to them that really raised the alarm bells, you know? No, 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 not at all. It'll be fascinating to see if if that tone abides in the days and weeks to come or if it does a complete uh, 180. So do you think, Samuel, that this is going to, this uncertainty, this $2.5 billion uncertainty, maybe the bill's going to come to you, maybe it's not, is it going to make hard, make it harder for the legislature to come up with a budget and to come to an agreement on tax relief? Yeah, uh, they're yeah. already they're already nervous by the uh, by the numbers that came in 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 May with or in April rather the big shortfall with, yeah, with, yeah. with tax revenues and so uh, yeah I think a two point five billion dollar potential bill depending on whatever bucket that's coming from I think that's still going to make lawmakers a bit nervous and it's coming at the time right now when the uh, conference committee has commenced talks and so uh, yep. no, no no doubt this is on their agenda yeah. okay Katie just briefly you get the last word on that will it complicate their jobs. I think they complicate their jobs enough as it is. The, there's a big difference in the House and Senate budget and the House and Senate approach to taxes. Yeah. So I think any other wrinkle isn't going to you know, bring them closer together. Mm-hmm. We've seen too much money make the budget negotiations draw out when there's too much money to spend. We saw a surprise $3 billion return to taxpayers last summer. You're right. Derail tax cuts. Right. I think anything could happen. Well, the drama and the excitement continues. Katie Lannon, Samuel Gebru, thank you both for being here. Thank you.